certain level of perfection. There was a new guard, and he was, like, definitely leading it. I mean, it was sort of being in the presence of a god. You know, it was Claude Montana. Claude's clothes were extraordinary. Of its time, it really challenged convention. You saw things going on with fabric there that you couldn't see anywhere else. It was really that shoulder that drove me completely off my fashion victim deep end, you know. Now, he was selling wholesale to 400 stores around the world, probably the biggest selling label of all of them. And a lot of the editors would quite literally take the whole outfit out of the bag and put it on the model. You would want the entire look. This was the designer decade. The decade whose signature silhouette he basically invented. Razor sharp tailoring, a masculine notion of a silhouette onto a female. As a band, we wore a lot of Montana clothes. Claude liked a little bit of drama. It was very operatic. It was just so much larger than life. Everything was about his collections and then going out and having fun. He wore the wide shoulders. He had, you know, pompadour hair. Going out in Paris and London. Decked out in leather head to toe. It was amazing. He was kind of a matinee idol pin-up, almost. He represented the height of everything that was happening. Go straight from the club to the studio, actually. Stepping into the studio that used to be just above a sex shop. And we'd start sketching and working and carry on till probably four or five in the morning. I used to call it like the black revolving hole. You didn't know how much time had passed. And Claude used to show the girls how to walk. He wanted to know what your pose, your entrance pose was going to be. Every entrance pose was the same. The, the inverted triangle was this, you know, with the knee out. It didn't matter if you were a superstar or a beginner, it was out of the question that you not appear on that catwalk. Claude would be like building you up and building you up. Doing the last, that last check. The like, flash go, is going go, off. Go, 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 go. The flash is going off in every direction. It was like being at a rock concert. The tickets were like a piece of gold. People fighting to get in and the show's running two hours late. People used to take knives with them to cut holes in the tent. The looks and the makeup, they were so total. There was none of this like, easy breezy, I just woke up this way kind of hair. Like none of that stuff that anybody could do. That required work. Women used to cry at Montana shows. They identified with the women they were seeing. You see how much those women are really, really enjoying themselves. We became these other beings, almost like a wild animal full of passion. Well, it was a very heady experience. Yeah. When you were a kid and you were seeing the shows of Paris, to me, it was like a real fantasy. It was like absolutely beautiful, and uh, that was luxury. <laughs> His influence, I think, is undeniably prevalent in a lot of things that myself and my peers are doing. The style was like, his style was so exacting and precise. I think he designed the whole woman and not the dress for the woman. Some of my go-to materials have connections. The, the volume and the structure is something that, um, that appeals to me, that kind of architectural rigor. He's really one of the pioneers that helped invent fashion as we experience it today. Claude Montana was inventing this idea of empowerment in his own French accent. No, he kind of referred to himself as a dream maker and this idea that fashion is a fantasy and for me it's a little bit like that Cinderella effect. As decades go by, they're still absolutely relevant. You know, he is the Marilyn Monroe or the James Dean of fashion.